I can interview people that are much more experienced than I am and not come in thinking that I know it all, but that I'm just, I'm just learning and people can. And I know for a fact that a lot of people have the mentality that they're just learning too. So I wasn't afraid right. to have these podcasts and these interviews because I had an unlimited amount of questions I could ask these guys. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Gecko Cove Connection. And today, here's a man who doesn't need an introduction, Harry from Zero's Geckos. Welcome, Harry. What's up? What's up? How's it going? <laughs> oh, man, I'm geeking out right now having you on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> I think I've said this multiple times. Uh, you are the inspiration for me getting on YouTube, um, watching your podcast and just seeing how much fun you and AJ are having, uh, learning from you guys about Crested Geckos. Uh, I just, I'm like, you know what? I would love to do that just selfishly and learn even more about gargoyle geckos. So, uh, since you are the person who came up with the idea for the gecko pod, uh, I'm giving you credit. So sorry, AJ. <laughs> yeah, no, no, thank you. No, appreciate that, Bobby. Um, yeah, no, um, thank you for having me and, uh, inviting me on. It's, uh, it's always a privilege and honor to, to be invited to other people's stuff. Right. And so, yeah, thank you for yeah. keeping on me. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, I think the podcast has been fun. I actually stole, I mean, the podcast have been around for a long time, but I actually stole the Crested yeah. Gecko podcast idea from, I don't know if they're still around. I think they were called, um, oh man, Gecko Galaxy. Okay. Gecko Galaxy. Uh, they had, I don't know. Uh, they had some good, at the, they, they, they were doing it a few months before me. And then, um, I was like, oh it's not bad, but I feel like there are things that I would tweak significantly tweak to make it a little yeah. bit better. <clears throat> but the, um, the idea of them just hanging out and talking and having guests on, you know, it's not new, but I, I, that's where I was like, Oh, I mean, I think I can, I can probably pull something off too. And uh, I think it would be well, good. Well, I definitely say you've done a, a hell of a job, probably better than you thought you would. Did you ever <laughs> think you'd be doing this two years later? Um, I didn't even think about it like that. I thought about it no. just like, okay, let me just get a few episodes in. And um, when I first started, then I was like, okay, I'm going to have AJ on as my first guest because, you know, I was I was already chatting with AJ in DMs, you know, looking for animals and buying stuff from him. And so yep. I asked him if he'd be down to um, go on the podcast and then not only that, but if he was down to, you know, guest co-host with, uh, co-host with me other guests yeah. I think that would be awesome so my my initial idea was that even if AJ didn't do it then I would invite other people and ask them to co-host the next one with me right oh so, okay so you always wanted a co-host I think because it makes for more um, interaction when it's a three-way when it comes to mm -hmm. conversations because like for me I'm I'm more of like a one-dimensional guy and I'm a little bit boring at times so if you watch the vlogs, oh, you sell yourself of, short, my friend. <laughs> I'm kind of monotonous <laughs> tone and kind of a little bit dreary. But if you have another person in with different perspectives, then I was like, okay, that's actually that actually might work. And so if AJ didn't agree to move on further, then I would just had other people do it. So I've always wanted a co-host, though, and I think it's always fun to bounce ideas off of each other. Yeah, and, and I love that you know it's not just even you and AJ. But then you got Brian in there. Brian's the only one I haven't met, uh, you know, other than we yeah. haven't met in person, but I've, I've chatted with you. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully he'll be there at Tinley this year, because for some reason, my grandfather and my, my grandmother are from New York. So anybody with that accent, I always <laughs> feel like they're part of my family. Right. Yeah. So I can't where, wait to meet him. Where are you from? Um, where are you, are you from yeah, the yeah. Midwest? By the way? Yeah. So I uh, from Chicagoland area. Okay. Okay, um, okay. Gotcha. But uh, I've got roots up in Wisconsin and lived in Texas and roots in New York. So I'm a mutt all over the place. Okay. No, no, that's good. So, yeah, so you're so, yeah, you got all the um, you have Tinley and everything out there where it's uh, Dude, that's my local it, show. That's the I'm New, spoiled. Cal, New Cal world. Yeah, <laughs> right. I didn't even know what it was. And then I'm listening to your podcast. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, there, you know, I'm listening to AJ and then Brian, I uh, Talk about or Brian. I'm going to butcher his last name. Uh, uh, Sundown Reptiles. Oh, uh, Susan. Susan, yeah. Susan, Dude, yeah. He's from my hometown. We went to the same high school. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Like, I'm just okay. like, I'm like yeah. connection. All of a sudden, I'm like geeking out watching <laughs> your podcast. I'm like, 
oh come yeah. on like, we probably know the same like hangouts and all that stuff and yeah. you know same teachers cool. and uh you know then we're talking about the all animal expo and yeah. i'm just yeah. like i was like you ever have just that instant connection and you haven't even talked to the person right yeah, yeah. so that that yeah. was really cool i uh, just hearing that this is kind of like one of the meccas for new cal people yeah yeah i agree yeah it's cool it's cool that you're you're right there. You can meet a bunch of people and <laughs> get connected. Except for everybody you. moves away. You know, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, AJ went to uh, North Carolina. <laughs> yep. Again, so North I, I get it. You know, not yeah. everybody enjoys taxes, but I guess I do. Uh, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, but uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's kind of fun just, you know, so I got the inspiration obviously from, from you guys. Awesome, I, man. yeah. And I was really excited when you guys had Tiki's on. And then uh, I, I think one of the episodes right before I started, like really like jumping on was uh, Jake from Red Rack. I think you did a a single host with him. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah. You you know, fun guy. I got to get him on here. I haven't even got him on here yet. Um, But he took that hiatus for so long and yeah. uh, yeah, So kind of cool. And I was like, I just want to, you know, cause I uh, told you this, but I'm a counselor by trade and, you know, being in education, I just am a lifelong learner. And so yeah, yeah. listening to things and, and collaborating, it's not about this belongs to you and that belongs to someone else. It's about let's share everything as much to, as possible, because once someone's done watching your podcast, yep. right. We'll move on. Um, yep. And they're, they're, they're still cleaning their gecko cages because it's taking more than an hour and a half, you know, <laughs> then they can jump on a different podcast and then yep. bust through that one. And I'm, I'm finding new podcasts, even myself, uh, animals at home. I, I just started listening to them recently. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, you know, other I've been, ones I've been listening to, you know, if not the gecko stuff, then I'll listen to plant podcast. And then, um, nice. <laughs> and then recently I've been listening, I've been trying to like get more information on hognose just cause I want to learn, not that I'm going to breed mm-hmm. them, but, um, I just like the aspect of like keeping thing, people collecting things and keeping things and then working on projects. That's what I, yeah. I love. I love that. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, even if it's bikes, like they're collecting yeah. bikes and then upgrading pieces and parts. I, yeah, I love learning, um, new things kind of like you, right? Like it's just, it's just fun. So it's just an endless, you know, you got to go down the, this rabbit hole and then yeah, that yeah, rabbit yeah. hole, yep. you know, and exactly. I, yeah, I feel like there, there's certain things that people gravitate towards, you know, when, when, you know, like, like plants, right? So how yeah. many people do you know that started with crested geckos or started with plants and then they switched, right? Because yeah. there's a crossover there with bioactive. Um, so that's actually one of my questions I wanted to ask you was, Outside of the gecko world, right? Maybe before you got your first crested gecko. Yeah. What was what were your hobbies? Because obviously, when you jump into a hobby, man, man you jump in, you know, head first. Uh, so have yeah. you done this before yeah. in other areas? No. So so the reptiles were newer to me. My my mm-hmm. daughter, she's fourteen now. She um she always liked reptiles, so she kept <clears throat> a snake, and then she wanted to a corn snake named Cornelius. And then, nice. um, <laughs> yeah, she kept, um, a leopard gecko and then she wanted a crested gecko. And so I got a crested gecko and that's when it kind of, I just, you know, I dove really deep into the geckos, but before the reptiles, I, I wasn't into, you know, rep, uh, reptiles, obviously <laughs> I was just into, I was, you know, I went biking. I liked, um, oh, nice. <clears throat> I like biking. I like rock climbing. So I was, I've been rock climbing since college, which is a long time ago. And, um, yeah. so I, I was always really into that. I've, I'm still pretty, um, into rock climbing, but now that I'm a little bit older, um, my joints are hurting a little bit more. I've been slowing down a little, <laughs> little bit. Yeah. Um, getting old is not for the faint of heart, you yeah, know, <laughs> yeah, uh, aging up, dude, <laughs> you're, you're still probably still really young. I don't know how old you are, but you're, you're much. Oh dude, I'm young. almost 40. Like oh, I yeah, okay, that guessing game. Yeah, well, okay, we're not yeah. we're pretty close then. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh man. So I always yeah. love when people are like, dude, you, you look like you're twenty five. I'm like, thank you. Yeah, dude. You should have seen me look- when I was twenty five. I looked like I was two. <laughs> you look pretty young, so <laughs> you look good, man. Yeah, it's the baby fat. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, so, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, but yeah, you but, so you know what's up. Like kind of aging up. Oh yeah. Starting to think of different hobbies and things. You can't be you know, I'll still exercise. I like exercise. My wife and I exercise a lot. 
Um, like nice. she, she's running Iron Man. She's done an Iron Man, and so we're always very active. Um, yeah. So that those are kind of our hobbies, just really outdoorsy stuff, They're kind of like physical and things like that. So um, it's kind of yeah, nice. I got to give you credit doing that kind of stuff when you have kids. Because how many kids do you have? I have four kids. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's a job, and uh, you know they're they're the best job in the world, but. To find time, I've got two kids myself, which yeah. I've, I've mentioned a few times, but I, to, to find time to go and lift like I used to, or even just go for a few jogs, um, you it's know, unless man. I put them in the stroller and push them, which I guess is a weighted <laughs> exercise. Um, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it gets better. I'll tell you, well, it gets, it's, it gets harder in different ways as they age up, mm -hmm. but, at, but it also gets better in the sense that you're able to, you know, they're a little bit more self-sufficient and then you'll find time to exercise again and stuff like yeah. that. So. We're, we're kind of yeah, I'm waiting age. for the time where they're potty trained. There's a gym by me oh, that bro. has like a really cool, like you can <laughs> drop them off and they go work out and they have a really cool like drawing and, and pool and everything for the kids. And I'm like, I just need to get to that stage and yeah. then go work out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. When we, um, Once the kids, once my youngest one, uh, he's seven now, but once he was out of diapers, yeah, dude, it, we it was amazing. We're like, <laughs> no more freaking diapers! Oh my gosh! Right. Like, my wife, my wife's an engineer. She calculated yeah. it out. She's like, I think, I think we went through like, oh man, was it like fifteen thousand diapers in the course of our uh, <laughs> yep. our kids? <laughs> so, oh, dude, a lot, a lot of diapers, dude. man. So, many so do you yeah. keep other pets other than the the geckos, or are you guys pretty much uh, one trick pony? Yeah, just new. Oh, I think you have a schnauzer, right? Yeah, I have a schnauzer. I've always nice. had a dog. I've had um, I had, <clears throat> I've had a, a whippet, um, and then a a vishla, and then Love my those. schnauzer. So the two, the two, uh, two older ones, they eventually passed away, and that's where I got my name too. Zeros geckos. Zeros was my first dog. That's before I got married, and uh, and then oh, so he passed cool. away, and then um, I named it, I named it Zeros geckos, um, uh with the intention of changing it, but then I built the brand mm -hmm. around it. So I'm like, oh, I can't change it now. <laughs> no, no, you, 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 you've, stuck, you've made I'm a name for that. yourself. You're, you're stuck. <laughs> so the guys are making fun of me. I'm dead dog, dead dogs, geckos now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you where that came from, but that's a great yeah. story. <laughs> I love that. Oh man. Yeah. But um, yeah, Dude. I do I have a schnauzer to answer your question. I have a schnauzer. She's, okay. she's going to be too soon. She's wild, man. Is she a giant or is she a standard? She's a standard. Yeah. She's okay. standard, so, so dude, I'm a dog a... nut. I've got three dogs myself. Oh, um, man. I've got a mini Aussie who, okay. he was my first dog <laughs> ever, like my personal dog. Yeah. He's still kicking at 14. We wow. actually share the same birthday. Oh, believe wow. it or not. Wow. And like, I didn't pick yeah. him because of that. Um, That's I didn't funny. even know until I got home and looked at his birthday and I'm like, holy cow, it's, it's oh, mine. That's awesome. Be, man. <laughs> Uh, he's the best dog Beckett. Uh, yeah. Beckett's geckos. I don't know if that goes as well, um, but <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, I mean, yeah. people will be like, Hey, Beckett. I'm like, that's not me. Um, yeah. 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 That's my dog. <laughs> yeah. Zero, right? zero is off enough where you can tell it's not a human's name. So <laughs> correct. Yeah, no, it, it totally works. Um, it's like how many geckos your wife wants you to have zeros geckos. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. okay. So um but yeah that i've got a standard aussie and they are crazier than the minis so uh, ah. if anybody they, they calm down which is awesome and yep. then i Change. my wife is like enough hair i uh, and so we got a puppy because the the standard aussie was young enough and just crazy enough we're like we need to get something to burn its energy off mm, uh yeah. and we end up getting an aussie doodle and she's a year old she's awesome she's way smarter but I yeah. uh, I never thought I'd be a doodle person. I used to make mm. fun of those people. And I hear doodles are now really, I'm one yeah, of they're them. They're smart and they don't they don't shed, right? You have to cut their hair. They don't shed. No, yeah. no, no, she's and she <laughs> she's gorgeous. So uh, super cuddly, which I love. Uh, yeah. But we were looking at a schnauzer. Yeah, the great. Yeah, dog. I got the schnauzer because my last two dogs they were they were huge shedders, and so I'm always vacuuming. But then the schnauzer is, mm -hmm. is it's great. It's great that I don't have to vacuum like very often because uh, it doesn't shed. So. <laughs> They're great all around dogs, especially if you socialize yeah. them. But I can talk about dogs. I used to do a different podcast for dogs because that's sort of a. Oh, you had I a dog podcast? From. No, I should do one. You know, oh, so if you want to, okay. if you want to branch off and just do that, we can talk <laughs> about you know go the around dog AKCs pod, man. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh. I also kind of got to say, it was cool. Is how long did it take you to come up with the gecko pod? Because I remember the first like whole yeah. bunch of episodes, you were just 
the unnamed anyway. podcast. Yeah. I thought that was so cool that you're just like, yeah, screw it. I, I'm not rushing yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you took yeah, your time. Episodes in, we didn't name it until Brian Butler came on, and then we named it. And uh, we got the name from um, AJ. Uh, AJ kind of uh, started naming it towards that. And then we also okay. – um, Noah Bounds also kind of like threw that idea in there as well. So Noah made this logo, right? And, um, oh, nice. and so he kind of threw that name. So it's between those two that said, Hey, what about this? And, you know, we kind of came eventually came to the gecko pod, but, um, but yeah, anyway, yeah. The first 10 episodes we didn't have name. Um, so I started the, to answer your question, I started the podcast. Yeah. Um, I think it was, I think it was like May or June of 2022. And yeah. I haven't been, I was, I wasn't keeping very long at all. I, I started collecting in at the end of 21. <clears throat> so let's say six months, six months. And then I started the uh, nameless podcast that became the gecko pod. Um, That's awesome. And the inspiration was, you know, like you, I'm, I just love learning. Like it doesn't matter what hobby I'm in. It could have been, if I didn't go into geckos, it could have been any random thing. I'm, I would have yeah. done the same exact thing. Um, but I love learning. And I realized that <clears throat> the things that I'm learning from AJ and other breeders, like I could just easily uh, record it and other people can listen in and very much yeah. like how everybody starts a podcast. Like we're, we're, I think we're just naturally learners and we like to share information so that it um, further progresses and um, builds up the hobby. And so um, I, that's where I came in thinking like, okay, I'm definitely not an authority figure because nobody knows who I am. Um, yeah. But um, I can interview people that are much more experienced than I am and not come in thinking that I know it all, but that I'm just, I'm just learning and people can. And I know for a fact that a lot of people have the mentality that they're just learning too. So I wasn't afraid right. to have these podcasts and these interviews because I had an unlimited amount of questions I could ask these guys. And in in doing that, I can ask all the questions that new breed any new breeder would have asked anyway, and um, right. we can learn in that way. But it evolved in the sense that AJ stayed on with me on the Gecko Pod, and we begin to kind of tweak and adjust in different ways. And so um, now it can be a little bit more informational, you know, with the morph chats, with um, some various other um, types of things that we're doing, but. If it didn't go there, I would have had the same strategy anyway. You know, I kind of like Love how it. you do. You just interview people, and you just you're just you're just honestly curious. You just have to be curious. Yeah, exactly. yeah you just have to be yeah. genuinely curious. And people love talking about their passion. And you know, if they're they're willing to come on and and you know talk about it, I'm willing to have them on. Um, yeah. And yep. so I think it's cool too. One thing I you know that my podcast is missing is that you know having my guests are my expert, my guests are my agent. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's cool to have not only you've got an authority figure in your guest, but yeah. you've also got someone else who can bring some different perspective from AJ. And one thing I like about, you know, how you guys do it and, you know, hope, hopefully AJ is okay with me saying this is yeah. I don't see him steamrolling your guests. He yeah. gives people the ability to just talk, whether he <laughs> agrees with it a hundred percent or not. Yeah. Um, he gives people just that platform, even being an authority figure himself. And I think that's really big of him, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I, so, I agree. I and like I think, that. I think this is why he and I are such a good team. Cause we have the same mentality when it comes like that. If AJ was aggressive and or domineering, he would not be on the podcast, man. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> I don't, I, I'm not, yeah, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to work with somebody that's like very domineering. Like I don't mind people leading and being strong figures, but if you're going mm -hmm. to uh, say things that are out of pocket or things that are just really, I don't know, off putting, then I don't, that's not the vibe I want. You know, I want yeah. the place to genuinely be a safe place where anybody, even people that don't like us, they, they can come in and at least learn something. Everybody you know? likes you guys. What are you talking about? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> You'll, you'll get there, Robbie. <laughs> Am I going to get canceled by having you on? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Eventually, Bobby, no, you'll, uh, you'll get to a place where, you know, people, I don't know, people may or may not like you, you know? <laughs> well, you know, hey, you know what? I'm used to that. Uh, 
the fun yeah. thing is, is so I think that's part of, you know, any community and, and we'll get to this in a minute. I really do want to talk to you a little bit about, I, uh, I love your, your, um, I, why am I blanking on the word? It's not a podcast. It's oh, your vlog. vlog. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. You know, and, and you know, take this the best way possible. Cause I loved these parts of this episode, but have you ever seen last man standing? No. Okay. So it was a comedy show. Okay. About a guy. Anyway, he had mostly women in his life, but at the end it was, he was kind of, it, it was a comedy thing about life lessons and he would have a, his little podcast and he just, uh, it was Tim Allen, right? Yeah. And Tim yeah. Allen would go and basically give a life lesson at the end of the episode. All right. And he's just good at what he does. Right. He was very eloquent to the point. He didn't have a lot of time. And I got to say, sometimes I listen to your, your vlog and, and I get kind of that vibe of like, dude, you're preaching, you know, oh. and, and, and <laughs> it's not a bad preach. It's just like, guys, as a counselor, there's some yeah, yeah. good life lessons that have nothing to do with yeah. geckos that you preach. Yeah. yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah. So, so I think, I think, I, um, yes, I think to some degree you catch on, but I also think that it ties in. So mm -hmm. it can tie totally. into how you run a business. So what I'm trying to get at when I, when I do the vlogs is that there's a lot of the intangibles of the hobby that people don't discuss. Um, and okay. so this is why we have so much toxicity in the hobby. It's <laughs> and there's so much complaining and, and it's because people don't have the mentality of, um, I, I feel like there's some work ethic missing and the some um, humanity missing when it comes to the, uh, the hobby aspect of it, because, you know, like okay. my last vlog, I talked about the technical aspects about learning a hobby. Everyone can learn how to take care and breed and, <clears throat> and, um, do these things. But, but the intangibles of the hobby, I think are what is needed in terms of, you know, just teaching people how to be hu human. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, you, you mean everybody who, who who plays around with geckos may not be the most extroverted <laughs> best with people. Yeah. You and kidding it's, me? it's not it's not a knock on <laughs> so majority of the hobby. There's a lot of good people. Like, I, I love right. this community, by the way. I love this hobby. And We're this part is of them. This. Right. All right. So this is not a knock on people. But there are a few um, characters that is just like, man, like. If, if we didn't have some of these characters, the hobby would be so much better. And it's not that I want to eliminate them. I want mm -hmm. a lot of these things to be teaching moments where we're just like, I, I'm not better than anybody, but we're all learning from each other. And if we're able to learn from each other, then uh, we should be able to, you know, speak truth to one another and, um, sure. and just learn from each other. Um, but so, that, so it does if take you don't mind me asking, you're talking more. about the intangibles, yeah. right? So yes, yeah. everybody can put, two geckos, three geckos in an enclosure, learn how to breed them, learn how to yeah. keep them alive. What are, are you talking more like the business side of things? You know, obviously there's the mm -hmm. people skills, the bedside manner, the sales, yeah. right? Are those the things that you're trying to talk yeah. to people about so that it, it just makes for a better interaction? Yeah. Okay. Partly. A lot of it for me is trying to gear people towards a community, right? How okay. do we build a community? How do, how do you command a community? And again, like I said in my vlog, it's not that you control or domineer and dominate a community. It's how can you command a com community where people will listen to you? Because we see a lot of readers and they complain that <clears throat> they, they're, they're complaining about, you know, they can't sell geckos, nobody supports them, things like that. And I'm like, that's not, that's a, that's a wrong mentality to have. Um, it's not about you getting, it's about how much can you give to, com to the community. And so when you sure. switch your mindset to like, what can I do? How can I be creative and find ways to give to the community? And that's when people will listen. And, and in order to grow your business and to grow, you know, whatever you're trying to do, whatever your goals are, you need to have people listen. Otherwise, how are you going to sell anything? If no one's going to listen right. to you, if nobody follows your page, if nobody respects you, how are you going to sell anything? And so I feel like it's important to um, find kind of your voice and kind of command even your little pocket um, of the gecko community and um, have people, you know, follow you and respect you and buy your animals. So it all connects, sure. I feel like. Well, I think what you're, you're getting at, and correct me if I'm wrong here, great, because I can be wrong. Um, you're talking about value add, right? So everybody and their mother 
not everybody, but has mm-hmm. geckos, right? Yeah. And there's a good amount of people with fantastic geckos. Yeah. And, and you know, if, whether you're, you know, we're talking certain lineages or just certain morphs, mm-hmm. but, you know, one thing you're doing, right, just to use you as an example, that your yeah. value adding the community is the podcast, is your vlog, right, is the things that you're putting out there for free, right? It's yep. just giving back. You're not making money, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and, and, you know, even I, I put on my AdSense for the first time, I think I made 10 bucks in two weeks. It's <laughs> yeah, not yeah. like I'm making, raking in money. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, just to edit videos costs more than that every month. Oh, dude, um, paying for a stream yard or Riverside, you're right. 500 bucks a year, bro. Like we're, we're paying to give information to people. <laughs> Correct. And that's what yeah. people need to understand is that, you yeah. know, but those are the things that, you know, your skill set has yeah, to yeah, give yeah. back. Right. And I think yeah. that's what I'm hearing from you. Um, and it doesn't have to be this. This is this is what we were called to do, right? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's it's you know people's photography skills, yes, right? Exactly. When I'm talking to Robbie's reptiles, yep. um, maybe it's people's uh, ability to draw logos, <clears throat> right, and connect with people that way, yeah. right? Um, all those different things are. are Nobody, nobody is, is entitled to sell their geckos, you know? Um, yeah. And so I think, yeah, just because people, when you give value in one way, shape or form, and it's the same thing with friendships and relationships, then people are more willing to invest in you. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's what yeah. I'm hearing from you. At least. Yeah. No, I think people need to find ways to get, yeah. Find ways to give to the community with, it, with whatever skills that they have, right? <clears throat> Not everyone's going to be, you know, like speakers, like, you know, you or I, or, you know, be bold to kind of like just talk to whomever and um, build that connection. And that's okay. Like, I'm not saying everybody yeah. should, but to the degree that people are able to have a voice, I do feel like I can help stoke that fire a little bit because, you know, yeah. like we see it. I don't know if you, you how much YouTube I, you watch, but I watch a lot of YouTube. Too much. <laughs> yeah. Not just not <laughs> animals, but like how right. people do, how people build businesses how people mm-hmm. build, become uh, influencers. And some people are just good storytellers, you know? And yes. a lot of people that I hear um, when they're first starting out is that they're super shy. They, they don't know how to interact with people, but then they take the step. They're just like, okay, let me just do the work. Let me just do the work to um, every day, let me, or every week, let me put out one vlog. Every week, let me put out one video and just build it. Three years later, they're not sh- as shy anymore and they have a powerful voice and people follow them. And so that's what I'm trying to um, mimic, but also show that it's important to kind of just put yourself out there, you know, even if you're shy, um, but also to find kind of your giftings and your skill set to um, share with the world. So if you're a photographer like yeah. Robbie, like, you know, maybe he can share more photography tips, you know, something like that. I don't know. You know, right. Well, even his, it's just like watching his videography, right? That's what he does. Uh, everybody's got a different skill set. One of the reasons why I asked you earlier, what do you do outside of geckos is yeah. I guarantee with your response of rock climbing, there's going to be hopefully more than five people are watching this, you know, five people <laughs> that go, dude, I rock climb too. Now all of a sudden <laughs> Harry's the man because we both rock climb, right? It's I don't know if they're rock climbing, rock climbing gecko uh, reptile people. <laughs> I mean, you know, the ultra how many rock bitch. climbers would love to have the sticky, you know, you know, pads yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on by a pinky. Oh, dude. Yeah. But, you know, but those those are the things, too, that you kind of <laughs> get from talking to people. And it doesn't have to be online. That's the other thing I think yeah. people need to realize. There's shows that people go to. There's some rock stars at shows that would never step, you know, foot in front of a camera. Right. right, right, um, right, right. That, that everybody knows, you know, I, one I talk about all the time is Ariel, right, from my uh, Aerotonics. You mm-hmm. know, I've not had him on the podcast, but everybody I know knows him. Right. And, and has a you, lot of great you, things to say about him. Yeah. You know who else? Uh, Chase from Zen X. Yeah. I've asked him yeah. a few times in different time periods and he's just not a camera type of person. So, you know, not everyone's Which you like have that. to respect. Yeah, exactly. Know? Like you don't have to be and you can still build out a business. Um, and so, but yeah, I just give one certain aspect that can be very helpful if you put yourself out there is what I'm saying. Very so. cool. So let me ask you this. Um, yeah. With your vlog, Right. Are, are you just kind of flying by the seat of your pants? Do you have a vision for what you want to accomplish other than this initial message? Yeah. Well, I mean, so I, every time I do the vlog, I, before I do the vlog, um, it can be, 
sometimes it's more intentional than other times, meaning sure. I'll sit down before I vlog and I'll write down topics that I want to hit. <clears throat> so I think the intentionality of vlogs is important. Um, you know, even though I call it a ramble vlog and it is a bit of a ramble because the vlog style allows me to be a little bit less structured, but even yeah. within that chaotic ramble, there is kind of a flow that I'm kind of working towards. Um, and so to answer your question, how is it going to be three months down the road? I don't know. Um, I haven't okay. planned that far out with the vlogs at the moment. I just hit the week and be like, okay, sometimes, um, like this morning, right. I was you know, this morning I was getting the kids ready for, for, uh, for school, about to drive them to school. And then just an idea popped in my mind and I just take my Apple phone and in the notes, I'll write down, oh, this might be good for a vlog. So yeah, <clears throat> throughout the week, I'm like, this would be a really good subject to talk about for new readers. And then I write it down. And then once I have about four or five things I want to discuss, then I just sit down and I, and I vlog about it. Um, awesome. So in terms of the overarching goal, I don't have a strong one yet. It's more to share information to help new breeders. And at the same time, it's also building a funnel towards kind of my stuff as well, right? So it's out on YouTube, mm -hmm. it's um, on IG. So when people click on it, they see the funnels and then eventually, <clears throat> you know, um, we make our sales, we build our business and we're sharing with the community. And so it's kind of helping in all aspects of the business in my, um, in my mind, that's kind of how I see it. So building the funnel. So you're practicing what you preach is basically yeah, what exactly. I'm hearing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, yeah. yeah, this is what I'm doing. And then, you know, and then people click on it and then they, it's a funnel towards whatever the auction, my website, whatever things I'm selling morph market. Right. Um, yeah. so that, that does help. So it has dual, dual purposes. The main purpose for me though, is that I just love sharing information and I love mm -hmm. building a community around it. So my, my happiness comes, you know, and to be honest, I haven't sold a lot of animals yet, right? I've sold a good amount, but not mm -hmm. a lot, not a lot to survive. Um, <clears throat> my no, joy comes our from, with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very minimal. Um, but so my joy comes from building a community. That's just, awesome. I just love seeing, I just love seeing, you know, people come together and learning and, and uh, growing in the hobby themselves. So that's where I find my motivation. And I love that. Um, you know, one thing I, I, I told you, I've worked in a high school, right? And one thing that I see in the gecko community, and a little bit more in the, the Crested Gecko community, just because it's larger, I think. Yeah. Um, and so it lends itself to it. There's a lot of clicks. I, I, am I wrong with that? Yeah, nope. You're not wrong with that. And so I feel like, which table do I get to sit at at Tinley? And I've never actually gone yeah. to the the show afterward, the the auction, uh, yeah, but I'm yeah. hoping to go this year. And it's one of those things where like, now I've made some new friends. I finally feel comfortable where I'm not like the new kid who walks into high school for the first time and goes, where do I go? Right. But yeah. also like, I don't know who's got beef with who. I just kind of stayed out of it. <laughs> and so... <laughs> You know, it's like this the first is... person to wave at me, I'm going to go sit with them. But, yeah. you know, hopefully that's the right choice. But yeah. I feel like we're in high school, dude. Dude, it's, I mean, hit it, nail on, <laughs> nail, nail on the head, bro. There's a lot of clicks. There's yeah. a decent amount of beef. Um, and it can be, it can be uh, definitely um, daunting when you kind of navigate that space. I see it as, <clears throat> I see it as any community. Whoever is going to accept yeah. me. I'm just going to just chill with them. Right. Yeah. Um, and not at the cost, hopefully of closing my own circles. So even for the gecko pod, me and AJ, you know, the, um, you know, people have joked that it's the, um, NCAA, the North Carolina, uh, NCCA, <laughs> North Carolina Crested Association. <laughs> and we laugh at that because there's some truth to that, right? We have Brian, we have AJ, yeah. we have Gabby, you know, and I understand that. And I see that. Yeah. My hope is that even though we naturally will have friends and I feel like that's okay, we naturally gonna have closer friends. My, Absolutely. my goal at least is to hopefully not be a click that is unwelcoming. And so I think when it comes to the gecko pod, we want to have as many people on as possible people that I naturally probably wouldn't like be super close friends with, but like, I don't, sure. you know, we can still be friends. And so I want to kind of mimic that and hopefully with um, uh, whatever we're trying to build, that it's a warm and welcoming place to all people. 
Um, and that's hard though, man. Like, cause I'm sure a lot of people, I'm not a lot. I'm sure some people don't like us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's well, no doubt, you know, I mean, you know but you're I, not going to, you're don't not going to make everybody don't. love you, you know? And, and if, yeah. if you're, if that's the goal of your social media accounts is to make everybody fall in love with you, exactly. you've already failed. Right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You gotta, you gotta stand for your morals. You gotta, you know, yeah. obviously we're not going to tolerate in today's world, people, you know, mistreating these animals, especially yeah. in our hobby. <laughs> but when it comes to just personality differences, I don't know. I, I've always been someone who like, dude, I was a football player, choir kid. Okay. I straddled <laughs> both fences as much as possible. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And so, you know, did it, did it lose me some friends? Sure. Yeah. But you know what? I, I don't have to, you know, the older I get, the less I care. And that's a good thing about getting older. Is, I agree with that. Like you said, I don't want to be clicky, but yeah. you just like, I know who I am. I'm no longer in high school, <laughs> right? I'm not trying to figure out who I am. So you know what? Either you love me for who I am or go, go, go log on to the next uh, YouTube clip. Go right yeah. ahead. No, more yeah. power to you. I think, I think that is a tricky space to navigate. And I think it's difficult, if, you know, you and I, we're, we're a little bit older and so we yeah. care less about what people think about us but it's tough yeah. when you're in your 20s or even into some of your 30s a little bit early 30s like i feel like there's still a lot of aspects where you don't want to be shunned Proving or yourself. hated and and so we begin to tiptoe and we fight back right so there's aspect mm -hmm. of like if someone like craps on me then i'm gonna crap on them and i'm like if someone craps on me i can just let it roll off my back i'm not gonna publicly use my platforms to shame anybody um, hopefully yep. like if I have, I'm sorry, but that, that is not my, yeah. intention, you know? <laughs> my intention is not to use any sort of platform or space to completely like slander or shame anybody. I, I feel like once you do that, you get into villain mode and, um, yes, those are well, you do it for that. easy clicks because <clears throat> that's an easy way to get clicks, yeah. but it's, 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 I mean, it sucks, man. Tears like, you down. It, it just perpetuates the toxicity and I, we can talk about, um, the principles of toxicity and how we shouldn't do things, but once we insert names into things, I feel like that's that becomes personal and that becomes um, vindictive. And I feel like that's just a crappy way to do stuff, man. Like, are we? A, is. What is? It's not. It's high school, but it's not high school, right? It's the high school drama, right. but it. I don't want it to be that. You know? No, like, it doesn't need to be. And and yeah. here's the other thing that that's even more <laughs> powerful about, especially the platforms you and I have, and other people yeah. have it on. Just to see anybody can go and upload a video to YouTube. By the way, it's free. Okay, so. Yeah. Be careful with that, though. It's something I teach my high school kids. It's yeah. there forever. And, and just because someone maybe doesn't do things the way you want them today or they're immature today or they're, they're not the kind of person you'd want to hang out with today, you and I both know hopefully we're old enough to realize that people change. You know, mm -hmm. it's not easy. They have to decide to change. I can't change people. But I've, I, you know, there's things that I've done in my 20s that I, I look back and go, wow, I was a moron. You know, <laughs> and I, I hope people would give me a, a second chance, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, but YouTube is forever. So you shame someone that can mess with them for a really long time. Yeah. 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 That's tough, man. I think that's, it's tricky, man. I, I think when we start to dehumanize each other, then it just gets really sloppy and really messy. I feel like just look, right. just look at the next person, even if you hate them, that's, you know, you can hate them. That's fine. Even if you hate them, man, yeah. dude. They're human, man. They're just, they're going through their stuff. They're maybe they were raised differently. Maybe, you know, they're going through a really bad, I don't know, marriage or some really other stuff that we don't know about. And so as much as they're villains to me and, you know, they, maybe some people have, you know, let's just make this up. Maybe some people have crapped on yeah. me and said some things and then, and then it's very easy for me to hate them. And maybe I can hate them on the back end and uh, privately, but I'm not sure I'm not going to perpetuate that hate. You know, I, th I feel like that's a, at least publicly. <laughs> yeah, at least publicly. There you go. Give me a few beers behind a closed door at a poker. Yeah. And then we'll, then we'll talk. I'll, I'll tell my um, wife, but I won't tell. I won't tell, my, uh, I won't tell the gecko people. <laughs> oh man. Oh. So oh, good yeah, times. Man. And, and again, I one thing I loved. Okay, so I uh, shout out to David at Tiki's. I love that shirt he created. Like, what does it say? Like, oh, it's um, just geckos or yeah, guys. Guys, chill. It's just geckos or something. Chill, yes. guys, or something. I was like, I was like something happened for him to make that shirt you know yeah. i don't want to know what it is but something happened the good, you know you know the good thing about tiki's is that so so here's the thing the yeah. more involved you are with the community the more dirt you're gonna see 
right? Oh, absolutely. This is natural. Like the more you're like out in the public, the more, um, you know, uh, um, uh, critique and, you know, people are going to criticize you. And that's, that's, it comes with the territory. And so David's been out long enough where he's probably experienced all all. (laughs) and he's just like, whatever guys, you know? So he's, he's been around for a long time and he's, you know, Tiki's is probably one of the most popular gecko related content on YouTube. I believe. Oh, right? absolutely. I think him and but I mean, even more so than Butler. I think he started before Butler. I would say more than Butler. <laughs> I, Butler's big, but I would say more than Butler. Yeah. And you know, like he, he he's up there with some of the just pet tubers, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows David, uh, and uh, yeah. you know, but anytime I I see him and we see him at shows or whatever, he's just like a normal, chill dude. And I do appreciate that about him that he's like, you yeah. know, he doesn't form clicks. He doesn't form, you know, like any sort of. <laughs> <laughs> he's just there's there's not a lot of negativity basically when you when no you dude i, I was surprised that. how easy it was like okay i reached out to him he's been on my podcast and i remember yeah. it was the last tinley i was when it was right before I, I we filmed like a week or two after tinley last time and i just wanted to say hi to him in person he wasn't vending and he was chatting with some other people i had no idea who they were right and I had to get going, but I'm like, hey, I just have to go and say hi. So I tap yeah. him on the shoulder. I interrupt him, you know, nicely. He could have been nicer, right? Yeah, dude. And then I saw him the yeah. next day and, you know, he said hi to me. <laughs> you know, it's not like we hung out and grabbed a beer already, you know, yeah. you know, you know, we're not BFFs tomorrow. But yeah. just the ability to just, you know, go and treat people with respect from day one <laughs> and not think that you're, Agreed. you know, top shit because you got so many followers on YouTube. Agreed, man. Yeah. Once you, once you act like that, like you, you are, yeah, you're better than anyone. I feel like that's <laughs> when I lose all respect for you. <laughs> and see, that's I, what I love about doing yeah. this. Honestly, the more I learn about geckos, the more I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, dude. I have no <laughs> idea. Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. And then you learn Teach me. <laughs> right. Yeah, bro. <laughs> so good times. Yeah. Well, okay. I want to talk a little bit about geckos. Yeah. I know we, we got out on that tangent, which I love. I think it's important. <laughs> but, uh, you know, clearly I'm into gargs a little bit more. Yeah. How many, you how jumped many gargs crested. do you have, by the way? Sorry. So right now I've got four females that are going. Okay. okay? Cool. Cool. Um, one <laughs> female may, I might add at the end of the year, but, but um, she'll be two, a little over two years old uh, in like three months. So okay. I'm debating whether cool. I, I have a male for her. But anyway, long story short, I don't have a lot, you know? And yeah. so I produced 13 eggs last year. I'm already up to 12 eggs this year. Nice. Okay. Uh, and I'm excited about that. That's good. So good. what are you numbers wise? Numbers wise. Um, and then you only got f- one pair of gargs. I only have one pair of gargs. They, <laughs> laid, they, they laid me uh, a fertile and a dud. So ah, one, I'll take you for a first one. One, <laughs> one of them Love is it. from, and I know you had Paige on your, on your. Um, oh, you got it from Cosmic? Yeah, yeah, she's amazing. Uh, I, I love Paige. She, Paige is really sweet. She, uh, she's like one she of the is. nicest people. So I got one from Paige and one from my other blotches from uh, um, Godzilla. Godzilla reptiles? Yeah. Mm hmm. So I got that, dude. You those got are, some quality stuff there. I knew yeah, those, those are my nice. only two. <laughs> those are my only two gargs, and they're they're over there. They're uh they're together. They're they're laid together, and so um. But okay, Beautiful so one pair of gargs, and um, crested wise, I have I probably paired thir- around thirty five ish females. Nice. Okay, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. So thirty five. I have a few more that I haven't paired yet, and I'm trying to figure out uh, what to do with them. But I've uh, I've done that pairing already, those pairings already, and total number of geckos maybe two fifty. I'm guessing around there. Wow, you really yeah, and that's that's so cool. Now let me ask this: yeah. without the gecko pod, where do you think your collection would realistically be? Would you be right where you're at? Oh, do you think uh, that you would question. have been like half the size? So the gecko pod, I would say, um wasn't the factor in how big I wanted to be, I think. Okay. I would say that it's more influenced by AJ, right? Not that he tells me to go bigger, but because (laughs) I've seen how he works. You're a baby compared to him. Dude, yeah. I've I've been to his house a couple times, right? So, and and so it, seeing his stuff showed me that I'm like, okay, that's a lot of animals, dude. But um, I can, I definitely can go bigger. 
because I had the yeah. cure down. And so I told this to AJ when I was, uh, when I stayed at his place in November, I said, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, um, because of how AJ has kind of helped me with my stuff and the care and whatnot, I feel like I could triple in size and be okay. Um, that's awesome. and that's how confident I feel with kind of the crested gecko world now. And it's, yeah, it, the gecko pod definitely helps as you kind of learn how everybody works, but it's more so, um, you know, just chatting with AJ, asking him questions all the time and really dialing down my care and my breeding practices has really got me to be like, I got this man. Like I can, that's awesome. I can triple in size right now and I feel like I can handle it. So, um, so 250 number for me right now, it's, it's very manageable. Um, okay. I do want to go bigger. So how much time would, I mean, cause I, I do get asked all the time, how <laughs> much time it takes me to take care of my collection and I'm on the really small side. Right. Yeah. So overall, I think I have close to 25 geckos at a time, okay. right. Which is nothing. Yeah. It probably takes me, you know, just because now if I was just to go in there, spray feed, be mechanical, right. Yeah. 25, 30 yep. minutes. Quick. Right. Yeah. Totally fine. What do I actually spend? Okay. It's like <laughs> saying, you know, Man, how much time do you spend in the bathroom? Well, I gotta look at everything. <laughs> I can go to my phone. By my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stay away from my kids you know? for a few for a, for like thirty minutes. <laughs> right. Oh, dude, if I watch Bluey one more time. Oh, uh, I, <laughs> before I came up here, my kids were watching Bluey. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like Bluey. Spoiler yeah, alert, but it's like good. it's a good show. <laughs> it is. It's totally made for adults. <laughs> yeah, <great>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, there's certain shows you're like, if I see this episode one more time, <laughs> I swear to God, I could, I could, I could just know, act it out right now. You for know what's you. cool? Like my kids started getting into anime, and so yeah, I, I was like, oh, okay. So you know, the older kids are watching Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen. So oh, I, I, nice. I was like, oh, this is actually really good, and I started watching. And I, <laughs> I got into it because of them. So um, yeah, but that's great. <laughs> yeah, what's Sorry, cool to too them. is so. No, no, it's okay. We can do our tangents. We can do what we want. It's our podcast. So, <laughs> but it's podcast. fun too. Just talking. What's that? Oh but yeah, this is the best podcast. We're just talking. <laughs> but, yeah, but it, so. somebody's gonna connect with us. It's not like we're the only ones with kids. Um, <laughs> but what's really fun too for me is my kids. They're not old enough for like the anime stuff. Yeah. But some of the stuff because of streaming that I had back in the day. I'm now like watching the old Ninja Turtles again. Yeah, man. Right? I'm like, no, stop watching the new stuff. Let's go back to the original. Yeah. And I'm watching these episodes. I'm like, I don't remember this. Like, I had like certain VHS <laughs> tapes, but like, I don't remember half these episodes. And they were god awful. Like, yeah, just the worst. So <laughs> That's so funny because back then we were like, this is amazing. You know, I know they're bringing back X Men, X Men uh, 97. And oh, man, nice. I watch those, man. I watch all those. I collect all the cards. And now they're bringing it back on, I said, Netflix. They're, they yeah. like re remastered them or something, and now they're uh, putting them back out. So I think that's pretty cool. That I'll watch again. Yeah, no, that yeah. that that series was just fantastic. Yeah. Um, I just hope they stop ruining some of our nostalgia. Like they, they you know, that's the other <laughs> problem with being our age is that everything we loved, some of it is it's done well. Okay, like I, I'm halfway through the second episode of. Did you ever watch uh, um, the Last Airbender? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so yep. they came out with that yep i've heard pros and cons visually it's stunning i won't give a review but it's like god i hope they don't ruin this for me like they oh, did man. with the movie <laughs> i only watched the first yeah the movie was oh the movie was rough i still like i still yes. enjoyed it though because i like that uh yeah i like the airbender stuff but that so i just fought, yeah. watched the first episode i haven't finished it yet though yeah it it, it visually stunning i like okay. it so <laughs> you ruined anyway, it already I can... that means it's not good <laughs> I'm not saying I'm only on the ep second episode, so I'm okay, not much okay. farther than you. So cool. I just I read too much. Um, rabbit holes got to go down. So yeah, yeah, back yeah. to numbers. Um, <laughs> so, but how long does it take you if you're militant to get your stuff done? Again, we're going from it I said 25 minutes for 20 geckos, yeah. and you have what 250? Yeah, yeah, about those numbers. Um, so I'll the feeding the feeding has to be done. So I'll feed um pangea twice a week and okay. and crickets at least once a week and the reason why i would ideally like to feed crickets twice a week but so but in the winter time the shipments of crickets always they've been coming dead man so yeah. it's very hard for me to get a consistent shipment of of crickets um whether it's nobody's um, convinced you to breed them yet no man yeah. <laughs> they smell too much i'm just like yeah I'm, they do i'm gonna bite the bullet i'm just gonna pay freaking 80 bucks a time to order these things it's expensive dude 
Um, but it is. <clears throat> just sell. I just met. Just sell two geckos. It'll cover the bill. <laughs> so, um, so if so, ideally, that's uh, that would be um, let's say three feedings, right? Three feedings okay. a week. Um, that'll take. I don't know. I'll take. I don't know. Maybe like four hours because I, I include the cleaning of the bowls and all that stuff. Right. And then there's the cleaning yeah. of the, are you saying four hours all week long or oh, four uh, hours I would say it time. takes more than four hours, but I, I, I'm really bad at tracking time. I just know I spend a lot of That's time. Okay. I spend a lot of time feeding, cleaning overall. I sh- I probably spend like, I don't know, 15 hours. Yeah. Uh, cleaning. You gotta up. love it, man. You if you're getting into this stuff, thinking dude. that that you know you you don't love like I I love how in some yeah. of your podcasts it, you're talking about if you don't love scrubbing poop don't do it yeah, <laughs> like that's the majority yeah, of this you have to scrub these cages uh, you know yeah. you get away with it for a couple of weeks not scrubbing certain things because you're just like okay if, yeah. if things are semi bioactive or in soil then you can just leave it for quite a while right just kind of do some oh, yeah. pot cleaning but if you're on paper towels which most of mine are you have to do that every week. Um, otherwise it starts oh, yeah. getting molded and stinks. So it does take a little bit of time to kind of run through everything. Um, maybe longer than it could even be longer than 10, 15 minutes. I should, I should track it and then I can give yeah. it an answer. But there you go. That'll be it, a vlog, you know? Just... Yeah, it'll be a vlog, but it, it does take a while. It does. It's no easy task. So, yeah. So, but yeah, <laughs> it, it, but we do love it. And that's the fun part is that, like we yeah. said, it, 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 there's the militant time, which you do when you're just exhausted and don't want to do it, right? Because that happens. Yeah. There's plenty of times where I'm like, oh, I had a rough day with my kids. Like, really? I got to go feed the geckos tonight. And you got to feed the geckos. You right? got to feed it, man. Yeah. Sometimes I'll stay up late to do it because uh, then, yeah, you just have the kids all day. And then yeah. you have maybe like two hours of a, a, your yourself time before you go to sleep. And you just got to yeah. do the geckos, just throw on some music or podcasts and uh, get to work. So there you um, go. That's what we're trying to provide everybody guys put on your podcast. Um, <laughs> so with your collection, like what keeps me going a lot, mm. you know, is I get to go look at them. Right. And I've got yeah. certain projects I'm waiting on and I'm, I love going digging for eggs is like my favorite thing. Yeah. And now my two year old, uh, I don't let them dig for eggs, but he, <laughs> he wants to get in there and do it. Uh, so eventually, hopefully when he gets old enough, he can do that with me. But, um, what projects are you currently so excited about that you just can't wait to open up that, that enclosure or to check on them? Do you have a a certain project you want to kind of shine on? Yeah. My main, my main stuff as I've shared, um, in, you know, the, the vlogs and whatnot, um, is, um, my, the high white project and by high white, we're talking about the high coverage white pattern and the degrees of whiteness I'm trying to make whiter. So you can have some mm-hmm. animals that are really high covered, high um, high coverage on you know the laterals, um, where mm-hmm. you know you don't see too much pattern, just a little bit of patterning on the top, the Harley patterns, um, and so that kind of breaks through. But then you, there are variations of whiteness to the yep. high white, the cream. So there's hatching that stuff um, for two seasons, going into three seasons now. Um, yeah, I really begin to nitpick on the degrees of whiteness in the things that I'm breeding. And right. um, I, I love that project because that project takes so long. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. not like a one and done. It, it'll last forever. Yeah. Dude, this is this thing I realized. And this is why like, I really appreciate AJ stuff. And, and actually I connected with AJ because of his high coverage, high white stuff. And I was like, Oh, these yep. animals are amazing. And that's when I got into it. I started buying stuff, started collecting things from different breeders. And I still love this project because, man, it takes so long to fine tune this project to be that crispy white with really clean pattern um, that just looks amazing. You know, not yep. not a lot of people have it like you'll you can see a lot of high coverage white stuff, but you mm-hmm. can tell the quality of how things have been fine tuned. And I like that aspect of the nitty gritty details, the nuances of the tiny details of the quality of a gecko, because most people won't be able to see it, but you know, mm-hmm. after you develop a eye and work on it so long, then uh, you can begin to appreciate it. So that's where I'm at. I've been working. Well, on- and the longer it takes, the more you're excited about yeah. it because you've just, you know, invested Dude. that much time. Yeah. So, okay, I I love the high whites. And I was thinking, you know, if I ever got into gargoyles, which will eventually happen, okay, Uh, or into crested geckos, you you guys know what I mean. Okay. (laughs) I do. I do. (laughs) So, um, 
I was thinking one project, you know, I'm always trying to think ahead, like what's not there yet, but that would be, you know, I don't have to rely on a new genetic trait coming out. Mm. And one thing that I think is really cool is I see some um, lily whites who have that orange, right? Okay. Yeah. I would love to take something like a high white, like yours, mm -hmm. right? Um, the stuff you're working on and find a way of getting a colored, you know, side lily white that also is white everywhere else, right? Yeah. I don't even know if that's possible. Yeah. But in my head, it's like I painted a picture and yeah, maybe yeah, I yeah. could get there, maybe I can't. But, yeah, I, you know, I, I think it would be kind of cool. Imagine just the orange stripes on the side or yeah, yellow cool. or something like that and then just white everywhere else. Yeah. I think that would be so cool. Yeah. It's uh, the cool thing about the, the Cresteds is that there are so many different variations of the traits at whatever you're looking for and you can mm -hmm. you know get to work and p try to put it together that's what's so fun about our projects right even gargs i know gargs they don't have as many yeah. you know like morphs or as as many traits but um but with the crest they're coming out guys yeah they're coming out right i feel like they're uh, coming yeah. out. <laughs> dude the next the next few generations i feel like there's going to be a lot more stuff in both you know crested yeah. and and um and gargs but yeah the cool thing about that the crest is is that you can and i see a lot of new breeders do this is they take certain traits that they like kind of like just what you explained and then they yeah. begin to collect pieces and try to build it together uh, but i think people need to realize how long it takes to, to work on projects yeah it takes quite a while <laughs> and how Which much money it goes into it yeah you know especially if you're breeding <laughs> at the higher ed you know some of the higher quality stuff um yeah. That's where I think crested geckos stay a little bit more popular because there is, you know, the high end is expensive no matter what. I think the, the highs are even higher than gargoyles, but um, gargs are pretty. Expensive. I would say on average they they're getting yeah they're getting there, but I would say you know for the average person looking to jump in and start a project, it's more affordable to to jump yeah. into a project with crested geckos. Yeah, that is true. Um, and yeah. so I think that's why it's it's easier to bite the bullet. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Are there any other projects except for your high whites that you're excited about? Because so, you were just preaching how you got to diversify a little bit, right? You can't just stick yep. with one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's my main project. But I he does listen. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a tiger project. I think tigers have been gotten a lot more popular in the last one or two seasons, and that now you. Yeah. So you know, like you, you've been seeing tigers sell for freaking five hundred dollars, six hundred bucks. When back in the day, you know, like AJ and. Um, uh, Janine from Treehouse Geckos, they're like, man, they couldn't get rid of these things before. They were wholesale animals, literally. Like mm -hmm. these things were like fifty bucks, and now, now they're like five hundred bucks, six hundred bucks. Everyone's starting to work on these projects, and that's kind of the cool thing uh, about these projects is that you know I can pick up a tiger project and kind of kind of chip away at that, and then spend more of my focus on kind of the high white stuff, um, and then I'm also getting a little bit into the morphs, whether it's Exantix, uh, the Cappuccinos, the Sables things like that. And I think that is what is going to make my base stock of the high whites exciting as I kind of mix the morphs into my base project. Um, yeah. And so a lot of new breeders will come do. in and they'll just start with morphs, which is fine. But I yeah. think they're not, maybe it would help if they had a non fancy morph trait to work on first to kind of practice, but you know, whatever people can do whatever they want and uh, they'll, they'll be okay. So yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so if you were to, to tell me, say, if I wanted to go and invest in a new project yeah. and I didn't want to take those two, what would be a good, inexpensive project that maybe you think would, would kind of take off in the next few years, right? If I really mm -hmm. worked at it, do you have any, any projections <laughs> other than the tiger that yeah. uh, it could be one man's garbage could be another man's, you know, gold Ooh, mine um, uh the spotted harleys i don't think are going to be it but who no, knows no yeah dude <laughs> <laughs> those will never if it's a trade secret we don't have to I mean, answer it maybe, but... i could probably i could probably eat my words on that but i think those will never <laughs> take off <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> if it does take off you can clip this and you know say i was wrong i'm okay with that um that's like, all yeah, right those will we'll be call them the sell. fetch line it'll never happen <laughs> <laughs> um no you if know you what, didn't I... get that joke you're too young <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, um, I don't. I wouldn't. I I don't. I wouldn't say that there's one thing that's going to be super promising. It's really how okay. whatever you do, and you do it well. It's it. It really depends because we've seen different things. We've seen Halloween's. We've seen the guy do Halloween's 
like uh, specialize only in Halloweens. So they look kind of mm-hmm. like this really bright orange with tigery stripes around. And he, man, he's he he does well. Like people look at look out for his stuff. It it you just have to market your stuff in a way and fine tune your project in a way that's going to be awesome. And you can do that with yeah. you can do that with almost anything. Um, there are certain things that you know are less popular. But I feel like I feel like tangerines don't have enough credit. I love you, you know, know like I've seen some tangerines. I've seen a lot more. Ta- I've seen tangerines picking up more steam. Um, yeah, and I feel like um, you know, there's. I'm not as familiar with kind of how the tangerine operates and works, and so I can't say for certain. Oh, yeah. But yeah, they definitely look cool. I know like fringe morphs have some. Um, you know, Nicoletta. You know, they work with some of those, and I think that there, there's a lot of promise to kind of those projects. Um, and what you yeah. can do, but yeah, I don't. If I, I got I into those sure. though, I'd have to get rid of the Dalmatian. I don't know if it's possible to get rid of the Dalmatian, but I just, it just ruins it for me. You know, yeah. either you get full doll. I love, love the super Dalmatians, super doll, but yeah. when there's just like one or two spots. Oh man, like, that is tough. The dolls, the dolls ah, touch, it just man. kills me. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty tough, but yeah, I, I mean that if you would really so, want to get yeah. into it, you can, yeah, I think. You can always work out morphs, you know, you know, a lot of things are so affordable now. Cappuccino, Sables. <laughs> no, that's um, awesome. It, that's, those are decent projects to work on, to be honest. Um, yeah. And uh, you can build, you could build a lot of good stuff off of that. So I would say, yeah, you know, if you were getting into it, like to look into that, if it's affordable, you know. Yeah. So how do you not get kind of like, you have all these amazing guests on, right? If you, yeah. You've had some real amazing podcasts yeah. and guests, obviously. And, yeah. Yeah, it could be. you know, they all specialize in slightly different things. And, you know, I think one thing that's hard to do in this hobby is not to look at everybody's best stuff mm-hmm. and go, oh, I have to have that. Oh, I have to have that. And then the next week you meet someone new and you're like, oh, actually, you know, I need to do that. You know, how do you stay so focused with your two projects or, yeah. or do you sometimes, you know, do you have a whole bunch of, of like is hundred hundred of your two fifty just random stuff that you yeah, picked bro. up because of the podcast? Yeah. It's, it's hard. I feel like this is, this is something that almost all new breeders do. They'll pick up yeah. five, six different things. And I did this too. This is why I know that I'm, <laughs> you pick five, six different things and you're like, it's once you realize how hard it is to work on one project and how much time and energy it takes, and how much space you need, you begin to fine tune and focus. Um, and so I learned the hard way because I bought a bunch of stuff and I had to get rid of a bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so now I'm like, it's just, I know physically I cannot have as many projects because of the space constraints. So yeah. if you have space, if you have a large space like AJ does, he can work on like five projects, no problem. Um, but even with the space that I have, and I feel like I have more than average. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I don't have a ton of stuff, but I have more than average, you know, you know, taking poles and stuff, uh, I have yeah. more than average. And even with my space, I have, I feel like I can focus all of this space on the high white project and yeah. still need more space. So that's, that's why I know through experience that I just don't you love how much of this is just relative, you know, yeah. like you're yeah. saying like compared to, to AJ, well, yeah, AJ, AJ has, has like a massive amount, right? <laughs> yeah. And you have, you know, if I told my wife I was going to have 250 geckos, she'd be like, and where are you going to put them? You know, like, I mean, that's the know, conversation not in my house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I bet, right? <laughs> She's like, what? No, I'm so, like, yes, we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. What did you negotiate there? Your know, laundry oh for God. a year? Um, oh, my God. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I remember talk, you talk to people who aren't us, right? Not mm-hmm. in this world. And they go, oh, you have more than one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, you know, they think we're crazy with, with you know, five geckos, let alone 20. Yeah. And uh, then, then, you know, there's always a next tier. There's always another. There's always a next tier, man. Someone yeah. to make you look more normal. Yep. Yep. This is true. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, man. Um, kind of similar question I wanted to ask, though, about your keeping style, right? Mm-hmm. So with meeting so many experts, right? Yeah. One thing that I struggled with in the beginning was everybody was giving me advice. I'm still trying to figure it out. You said you started this when you were six months in, The right? podcast, yeah. Yeah, the podcast. Mm-hmm. So, like, did you just trust one person 
or two people and kind of adopt their way of keeping or like, you know, I've had to kind of rein it in and just customize what works for me, yes. but it's taken, you know, Oh, this week I learned this and I'm going to try this. Oh, I really shouldn't mix these two things that I've learned. If you, if that makes sense, yep. like yep. there's almost too much information coming in yep. where I needed just one workout plan versus like five trainers workout plans. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense in general. So I've tried a bits and pieces of a lot of our guest stuff and yeah. um, just to see if it works or not, you know, even if I knew I wasn't going to do it, I want to at least have sure. the experience to be like, that didn't work for me. It might work for you, but it didn't work for me. Um, you know, because you and I, and I feel like all breeders, if you're serious breeders, you're going to try to have the best care, the best setup, the best breeding practices. And I feel like it does take a little bit of um, trial and error, mm -hmm. but in general, a lot of how I've grown is learning from kind of AJ's practices and just trusting how he does stuff. And um, that has helped me to just be really confident and experiencing it and seeing it firsthand how I did it. I'm like, okay, this works. Um, you yeah. know, but there are little things here and there. Like I'll try before I would try like little, um, those little white dishes with, you know, you could keep like, um, Mealworms, and... uh, mealworms, <laughs> mealworms in them. Yep. And I put I gotcha. in there. I put them. I put them all in here. And then you know, I tried that for several months, and it just took more work to do that than not do that. So eventually, yeah. How many I'm times do you have to kill a beetle? Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then a, dude. So my whole idea was that I didn't want to spend on crickets, and this is why yeah. I know that a lot of people don't feed crickets because it's expensive. Uh, yep. If the bigger your collection, it's just so expensive, man. And um, so I had the crossroads where I was just trying different things. I even had a dubia colony trying to tong feed all my stuff. And then the bigger yep. my stuff grew, the more I realized I just had to bite the bullet and buy crickets. And so yep. AJ has been doing crickets for a long time for his massive collection. He did that tens of thousands of crickets like a week. Right. And I was like, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. You know, after a while, I just had to trust that, you know, maybe he knows what he's doing. And uh, yeah, so I, I bit the bullet and I pay. I have a budget set aside for crickets and it's been working well in terms of how they grow and how they flourish and thrive and they look um, healthier. And I feel like that's an example of, you know, things I've learned, tried different things, dubias, now crickets right. know, falling, falling in line with the, the whole cricket thing. And so, um, so yeah, I tried bits and pieces of different people's stuff, but at the end of the day, um, I've adopted a handful of things from other people, but in general, I keep very close to kind of how AJ keeps. So it is funny yeah. how, you know, it's everybody's trying to reinvent the wheel, right? Yeah. And, you know, solve problems. And it, it, I've done it too, right? And at the end of the day, sometimes the OGs just know what they're doing. You know, <laughs> not always, but not you always. Know, there's always room to grow and we yeah. should always question. But sometimes they just have it right with certain things yeah. and, and you just go back to it. Yeah. So, I think so. I, I also think that. it depends on like what type of breeder you want to be, right? If you're just going to be yeah. a 10 gecko or less, you know, more just kind of fun pet, pet thing, you know, sure. like a small breeding project, you're going to keep differently than AJ is going to keep, you know, the oh, more yeah. numbers you have, you just have to adjust, man. Like I could tong feed my 10 geckos easily. I would stand dubious if I only had 10 geckos. But yeah. um, with the amount of geckos, you just have to evolve. So people go through different phases of breeding. And so my way of doing things isn't going to work for somebody that's much smaller, you know? Um, and so yeah. I think people have to keep that in mind as well. Well, I did bioactive for the first year of owning yeah. them. And it was yeah. great. They were just growing out. I didn't yeah. breed them, right? And so way less maintenance. And yeah. the geckos yeah. were this big. So their poop just disappeared. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, these geckos <laughs> get big and... Like you said, I was tong feeding some roaches. I had a roach colony back then. And all of a sudden, I'm like, well, I've got to search for eggs. Oh, well, this is not easy to do. And, you know, not all my enclosures are the same size. So this one's waterlogged and this one's yeah. dry as hell. And sometimes you we'll know? lose some eggs and be like, oh, man, if I just change this thing, I could have saved some eggs, right? And that's when you begin to adjust, right? right? If you want the mistakes and you so make. Exactly. And so you, you find out what works for you at your stage yeah. uh, while still doing the best for the animals, which, yep. is, which is great. Um, all right. So I want to uh, bring us back to the gecko pod for just uh, yeah. a few more questions if you have got time. Yeah, man. Um, sure. So, you know, I, I, I love that, that you're, you're on here with me, right? I asked actually during your live, 
Yeah. Uh, is there anybody that you have been trying to get a hold of <laughs> that you would love to have on your ear podcast? Um, and maybe we can try to convince them together on this one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> Again, while that. respecting the nose, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. I posted that question up on the live. And then, you know, Brian, who's uh -huh. trolling, he's like, oh, Bobby's going to steal your gas. I'm like, bro. I like saw that. Yeah. <laughs> We're just trolling, man. I love it. I love Dude, it. I would no, I know I love it. I I, I laughed when he did that because I'm like, you oh, know what? Man. I'm gonna email Frank uh Frank yeah, Bass right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's all good so, because I feel like I feel like most people most people will do if you ask them, most people will do it. No matter yeah. no matter no matter how big you are, right? Like Tiki's mm -hmm. did my you know, did ours. I'm mean, you know yeah, EJ, but and yeah. then Tiki's did yours, right? And Tiki's did right. some other right random all... persons that, you know, I was like, I love that. I, most most people will do that. Um, So I don't, well, yeah, I think it's cool if we can, you know, if we have different guests and we're asking different questions. Um, but to answer your question, I I don't have like, I don't have like a, like, oh, I must have this guy on. Um, The guy sure. that I've been wanting to have on, that would be cool. <clears throat> and I saw him on Herbiticulture uh, with Phil and Roy sure. um, Rapashi. I thought that was a good yeah. Alan. I thought that was a good um was a good episode because I feel like he, there's so much to learn from that guy, and uh you know I think I don't know I I don't have a personal relationship with him at all like he probably doesn't even know mm -hmm. who I am, but you know like the Gilpins and AJ you know they know him and um that'd be cool to have just to kind of pick his brain a little bit and ask questions a little bit differently than those other guys did on the other podcast and so he would be yeah. a cool one to have. Um, another one that, you know, totally I've agree. asked a couple times would be Chase <laughs> Zen Ah, uh, yeah. I know mainly because, and and I ask because, um, I know he's not like an OG OG OG, but because mm -hmm. his stuff is so popular, you know, yeah, his stuff, and he, he's fine tuned his project so well, and it's so clean looking. And so when I came into the hobby, like he was one of the guys that was already at the top and I'm like, Oh, this guy, I want to get some of his animals. Right. And eventually I didn't because it's so expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Bar to entry, yeah, which is fine. You know, people were buying it, but um, he would be cool to kind of ask about kind of his world of how he operates because he's not in, he's not very public with his stuff. I see him on socials and he, he does have a voice, you know, on his Facebook yeah. or whatever uh, he can, you know, he can, he can talk, but he's not, public in the sense that he's not on podcasts he's not um he's not on ig too often and things like that and so um but everybody sure. knows him and so um i i want to provide value where people will be like oh that's a good guest to have on because you know we have all this stuff i'm curious about all these questions about his stock and how he came about and uh, he would be a good one probably to to interview if we ever got to it but uh yeah he'd be I awesome know. i don't know if that will happen but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe one day yeah so yeah, there uh, are, i'll watch that episode yeah yeah there are other people obviously like some of the ogs like uh um <clears throat> like philippe and and frank and you know all those ogs but um you know um yep. that, i'll leave that up to aj because i you know i'll i'll message somebody but you know that they might not they don't know who i am so they're not going to reply right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is okay. Uh, I I won't say who, but I remember one of my my favorite guests that I've had on my podcast. Yeah, you know we're messaging back and forth. Couldn't have been nicer. Yeah. And uh, I won't even say this individual. We get you get to recording right, and and I was talking to you before we started recording. I did the same thing with them. Yeah, yeah. And I go, you know, is there any questions before we get started? And this individual goes, Yeah, who the hell are you? And I'm just like, <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> Like I'm just this nobody you said yes to, you know. That's and just the oh, Whoa. it's just it, it broke the ice and <laughs> it just it made the episode amazing. That's pretty so, funny. That's kind of funny. Uh, you know who you are, and you're amazing. We'll have to have you back on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'd be so. honored if someone did that. I was like, oh, you don't know who I'm. Right. Thank, thank you for talking to me. Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, how chill they are. No, that's awesome. Um, though. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people don't know who I am, but they know who AJ is, right? And so, um, yeah. So I think that that that, that helps. But I when I uh, when I ask people on the on the show, you know, I just mm -hmm. say, you know, are you interested in like this like really small podcast? I make sure that you know it's not something that I'm trying to like sell them, but I just would love to learn from them. And um, and most yeah. people are, are open to it, even without name name dropping or anything. So right. 
Do you find some people, <laughs> like I've had some people where I have to list out every single question for them ahead of time. Some people are like, nope, we're going to fly by the seat of our pants. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny how whatever it is to make people feel comfortable, I'm willing to do it yeah. just because Agreed. I want to learn from them. Agreed. Um, and so I think that's kind of cool. So if, if we reach out to you, I'm, I'm going to speak for myself here. If I reach out to anybody who's watching and ask you on, and you have a special request that would make you more comfortable, come, just talk, ask for it. I'll probably say yes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep, for sure. So yeah, very cool. Have you ever had a guest where they just completely surprised you? Like nothing like you thought they were going to be. Like sometimes I I see people on Instagram, I talk to them, but there's no pictures of people. It's all geckos. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I get on the podcast and it's like, oh, that's what you look like. I had no idea. Mm, or even personality. I I don't think so. I feel like everybody we've okay. had on, I know what they look like. And for the most part, I've I know their personality. Um just from talking okay. with them through DMs or seeing them on other socials, things like that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, it would be hard for me to go in blind, like not knowing any somebody's personality, because if they're a wild card, like I don't know them at all, I, I would be very hesitant to put them on <laughs> when I'm on the podcast. Fair enough. I'm not that smart. Uh, I <laughs> I've had a lot of random people that I'm like, I have never talked to you more than like 20 minutes, but they wanted to be on. Uh, yeah. And, and, well, either that or I ask because I just, sometimes I just, I geek out on on their IG page and I just see some amazing stuff. Yeah. And I'll ask a few leading questions just to see if I think they're um, you know, willing to come on and 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 just if they're respectful and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um yeah. but again, I don't know going back to what we were talking earlier. I don't know the politics of the playing field. And so, you know, if this is somebody who pissed everybody off, I might step on a landmine. Yeah, so, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I would say just put yeah. them on. Like I, that's what I do. Yeah. I feel like they're even within the, the people that we've interviewed. Um, yeah. I and mean, not everyone gets along. It's, it's yeah. <laughs> uh, and I know that and that it's fine. Right. I, I want to make it our platforms to be a fair place where people are just learning from different people, even if you don't yeah. agree with them. And uh, so don't worry about the stepping on that. My you know, it'd be a cool yeah. spinoff. You know what we should do uh -huh. with my counseling background secretly ask these people if they're willing to come on and, and air their beef and we could have like a, a an open <laughs> a forum therapy session oh, just to bring funny. the community together it'll never happen we're not actually going to do this that's but nice. it would be wouldn't that be a yeah. hilarious like yeah podcast yeah. where yeah. all right i'm the mediator <laughs> yeah 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 this is a safe session for you guys i'm the mediator yes. you know and then you you talk to people we're just gonna publicly beef. you know oh, that'd be <laughs> yeah, funny, exactly man. You know, That'd they just got to start chanting, Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then if that doesn't work, we can, you know, have them get jacked in the next, you know, few months and <laughs> put them in a ring and, you know, some, oh, put some yeah. gloves on them. Yeah, that'd be, funny. So. <laughs> that'd be funny. Yeah. If you don't know, the, if you don't know the politics or the drama, it doesn't matter. Just uh, whatever you no. see catches your eye and are, they are interesting to you and yeah. they you think that they'll provide value for the community then just have them on and ask that's kind of how i see yeah. it so and that's why you know i love your lives i really I, yeah, i've watched every single one of them yeah, um appreciate it. but that's why i don't do these live is because if there's something that i just am not comfortable with and it hasn't happened really yet yeah. uh or if i feel <laughs> like you know i have brought on somebody who i i can't you know really associate with mm. um i can delete it yeah that <laughs> so, is true that's absolutely that true. is there's one are, advantage. Are there a few guests in mind that you're like, oh, I got to have have a handful, uh, you know, X, Y and Z person. You know what? Honestly, uh, so by the time this comes out, yeah. uh, the last two guests yeah. right before you, I have been trying to get them on for a very long time. Actually, I had them booked and then I got really <laughs> sick uh, around Christmas time. And so I had to cancel and it really bummed me out. Um, but I was not going to. Uh, cancel on Philippe. I, oh, so yeah. I, yeah, or Philip, sorry. I got fancy with his name. It's like Target. <laughs> <laughs> but no, for Philip, I, but no, the next the two people that I'm going to have on, I, I've been chasing for, for quite a while. Sweet. Yeah. Um, the one that's coming out, I, again, this is coming out in three weeks. The one that's coming out next is Dragonborn Exotics. And I've been following his stuff for a really long uh, Ryan. time. Um, Ryan is awesome. I have, and a, I have a gecko. He's Ryan. done. Do you? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, he's got just crazy stuff. And he's done some really cool collaborations with uh, somebody who I really want to get on. So I, I would love to get um, I, I I'm blanking on it right now. It's a uh, uh, gargoyle queen. So oh, okay, Kylie. Yeah. Nice. Um, so <clears throat> if I can get her on, I get more requests for her as a gargoyle podcast than anyone yeah. else. Yeah. Um, people really want to see her. Uh, her episode just because, and again, no pressure, by the way, <laughs> but, uh, but Queen, she's got so much knowledge. On. Bobby, Bobby wants to learn from you. So get on. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. So Dude, that's cool. Uh, you- she's got the best website out there. And, and yeah, you know, it's very informative. Um, do you feel like, uh, I mean, cause even Jake at Red Rock told me about her and mm-hmm. I was like, and I started looking at her stuff. I'm like, wow, she's very, she's very detailed with all her stuff and her pairings and the lineage and stuff. Um, do you feel like with the gargoyle, breeders it's like a much Mm -hmm. obviously it's a much smaller pot right is it harder to find people for your podcast uh i haven't had a hard time yet but again i'm only 20 episodes in okay right and so um there's there's a decent amount of people to reach out to and i've got some other people who have said yes just you know timing doesn't work out yeah um we got to reschedule kind of things um Still want to get Rack House on, Eclipse Exotics. Um, you know, uh, they said yes a while ago, and then just timing wise, we had to reschedule. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to get them back on. So I think, yes, there's probably less people for me to ask. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, what I would love to see too is that you guys start asking even some of the people I've had on to come on your show if, if there's an interest. Oh, Gark people. Because I think. Yeah. Yeah, because you guys have a different perspective, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and even my small perspective of only having gargoyles, you know, with you and AJ, you only have a pair. I want to get you more addicted to them. I think that would be a lot more <laughs> AJ fun. AJ has a decent amount. Um, he has a, he dude, has he's a, got a ton. He has a good group of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, compared to Crested Geckos, yes, no. I mean, yeah, yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah. But, I mean, he's got more gargoyles than I do. I mean, yeah. I should say something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So... Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's even an authority to me. I would love to have him on just to check Gargoyles, his perspective there. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a good Which would there. be a unique thing because you guys don't talk about him that much. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> that's right. You gotta have uh do you gotta have um Susan on Sundown. I would love to have him on there. <laughs> yeah, I, I've reached out to him a few times and again we got that that connection. We're from the hometown. Yeah. So Yeah, is he gonna do it? I don't know. I mean I it's one of those things that it sounds promising, but Brian, as soon as you want to come on, just yeah, I'll yeah, make yeah, time yeah. for you. Yeah. So yeah, I, he's yeah, a fun guy to chat with just in person. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's hard, man. So. It, yeah. I, I feel you on kind of getting the guests and lining them up because, you know, like I think we're almost like 60 episodes in and then for the yeah. rest of the year, you know, it's not always easy to map out exactly, you know, the people and you have to chase people. It's like herding cats. And um, so I feel you. I feel, I feel well, you and on you've the got two, two. All right. So. I'm impressed that you guys can even coordinate all this stuff because not only do you have your schedule mm-hmm. and you're on an ent- entirely different coast yeah, than man. your co-host, yeah, Cal- and, but AJ's got a new baby, He's you know, baby. that alone. <laughs> so yeah. I give you credit. Yeah, it, t- it does take a lot of work. So, so an example is, uh, I mean, you're, you're airing this three weeks out. So by the time yeah. our episode comes out, uh, I've, I'll have uh, interviewed this guest, but so this Saturday yeah. we're interviewing, Tara Lee, right? Tara Lee Cresties. Uh, Tara, um, yeah. And then I've been trying to get her on for so long and uh, our schedule just didn't sync up. And then finally, okay, we're like, okay, how about this Saturday? We normally don't record on Saturday. Saturday morning, yep. Saturday morning, I'm on I'm on Cali time, uh, Pacific time, and they're over there in the East Coast. And I'm like, all right, I'll wake up at 6.30 <laughs> to do this interview. Yep. <laughs> so you just got to do what you got to do, you know? Um Exactly. You try to accommodate your guest and just uh, try to make them feel comfortable and um, excited to be there. And so, yeah, I'll, uh, you know, short of being like completely like screwed, like I'll, um, I'll go to my way for people. So just like you, right? So no, that's awesome. You know, honestly, I think you guys <laughs> provide such a service to the community. You, you really do live what you preach, which I appreciate, right? You're not a hypocrite. Um, Every time I've met, you know, I, I met AJ, like I said, uh, a few months ago at Tinley, I couldn't have been nicer. Couldn't have, you know, it didn't feel like I was, I was intruding or, or wasting yeah. his time. Yeah. I'd love to meet you in person, yeah, man. but it's just, it's one of those things yeah. where uh, you can really tell that you guys are genuine. I think that's why you guys are so successful. Hmm. And uh, you know, if I can, if I can emulate 
even a small percentage of that, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm being successful myself. So yeah. no, uh, pretty, thank you for inspiring me to that, do buddy. this. Yeah. I, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, watch TV and they're like, oh, I'd love to be on that show or I'd love to be on YouTube or, mm -hmm. you know, and we're, we're just, it's very easy to be passive. <clears throat> um, to jump into the fray and put yourself out there is, uh, you know, just takes a little inspiration and you were my inspiration. So thank, thank you, you so man. much. Yeah, I appreciate that, Bobby. Yeah, thank you for just your uh, your care and support. And I, I want to see I want to see you do well too. You know, I feel like you have a good niche with the Gargs and beyond, right? I feel like you could expand even further. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I hope you do really well. And um, yeah, just just continue to be creative and just uh, keep pushing, man. Even uh, even right. when number you know numbers, <laughs> like I said, numbers aren't everything. But even if no, numbers aren't all. there, just keep uh, putting out content and um, it'll it'll click. You know. Dude, I need that ten dollars. Can, can I borrow that ten dollars? Like, please. I, I don't even know how, how do you get Got the ten dollars. Is it? Ad you can't. You got to make a hundred bucks before they'll pay you. Wow. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. You just turn on AdSense. I don't, I don't even know how that works. Yeah, AdSense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you guys have got to qualify at this point. But I have um, no idea because I I have no I don't even want to, I, you know <laughs> I, you don't even want to deal with that. I yeah. With, I won't make ten dollars. No. <laughs> I don't know what that is. No, but seriously, well, you, uh, so, I'm so this bad is at one thing I learned from Sostick uh, Reptiles is actually the niche we're in, uh, it's not as good as I think like the business sector, like finance, stuff like that pays like almost $20 yeah. for every thousand views. Okay. And um, then the I tech, think, right? The tech, the tech side of things is like the tech is like, yeah, like $20, $25. It's insane. Wow. Um, what's funny is the number one channel that makes the most money is Mr. Beast and his like per thousand is like a dollar 50, right? Or something ridiculously small like that. Wow. And he still makes that much money. That's crazy. Um, yeah. I think ours on <laughs> average for, for anything to do with animals and hobbies like this, it's around like four fifty five dollars If I'm not mistaken, it's hard to find. For every how number. many views? For every thousand views. Okay. Okay. So gotcha. like most of my videos don't even reach 500 people. Okay. Yeah. So it's like multiple videos. <clears throat> over time um yeah. once it was monetized and i didn't get monetized until like a week ago okay. two weeks ago <laughs> bro i didn't even look at it <laughs> to be yeah honest. i i don't i don't look at it in the sense of like i'm trying to uh, monetize the channel i see it as a funnel no i see it as a funnel yeah. towards you know our stuff our product whatever we're gonna eventually right. sell so i i feel like that's gonna be the payout um eventually i mean obviously like um aj AJ gets more time, you know, things going to his auction and people know his animals more. And so yeah. in that sense, it works, you know, for me, uh, yeah, rather than getting like four fifty or $10 a month, I'd rather <laughs> sell one gecko, right? Hey, so. there you go. Hey, but it could be your cricket money. Turn it on. <laughs> no. Sorry, everybody. If, if he turns on the AdSense and you get really pissed off about uh, that. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't imagine turning on. I don't. Yeah. At least I haven't even looked at it or thought about it, but. Um, you know, that, that, that says it. something about you. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it doesn't take much, but I, yeah, I'll ask you about that. I don't later. mind watching. A, <laughs> I don't mind watching another advertisement for you guys. I'll still watch you guys. Um, <laughs> Thanks, dude. So no, no, no problem. That's funny. Um, I feel like we all succeed when, when one of us can, I, you know, my video shows your video. And again, we're all just learning from each other. So <laughs> for sure. uh, it's not competition. It's, it's, it's sharing knowledge. And that's one thing I talked a lot about with Wally. Do you ever watch mm -hmm. uh, Supreme Geckos? Yep. Yep. Wally. I love his stuff, dude. Yeah, he's funny. He's man. one of the most genuine guys I've ever met in my life. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Uh, and so, <laughs> yeah, he's all, he's also, I gotta say one thing I love is do you ever have like fans where you notice they post on every single video and like, yeah. Yeah. They'll just, they're just there for you. You're right. Like, they get nothing yeah. out of it. Yes. They'll comment. Yeah. They'll, uh -huh. they'll comment they'll on like your videos. Video. They'll yeah. even watch. Yeah. They'll watch your lives, you know, constantly. Um, Wally is always on my lives. Like, you know, <laughs> and I'll post it random times and not even tell him. And, you know, he's like encouraging people to, to help me yeah, out man. sometimes. And yeah. like, I'm like, dude, he's the man, you know, That's I really good. appreciate him. Yeah. So yeah. Wally's cool. Very cool. <laughs> um, all right. One last question. Uh, actually, I'm going to ask you two last questions, yep. and then I'll let you go for the the night. I Sounds appreciate good. coming on. Yeah. Um, if <laughs> clearly, I would love you to answer gargoyle geckos, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, that's my thing. If all the crested geckos dropped off the face of the earth and went extinct again tomorrow, yeah, what new cow species or what species would you want to dive into to still be a part of the community mm. and kind of rebuild? 
<laughs> I got to see Gargoyles because again. of you. But, <laughs> okay, thank you. But, but, but you but know what I have more of? on you like AJ says all the time? <laughs> <laughs> what I have more of is the Kahua, Chihua, however you want to say it. Yeah. Uh, I have maybe six, six or – it's a small group, six to seven. Okay. But I, I do like Gargs. I, I love how they look. Uh, I I actually like how they look more than the uh, the Chewies. Um, yeah. I think Gargs are – yeah, man, just their head structure. Uh, if I so if I dial down, you get the ones with good horns. Yeah, man. Yeah, yes. Like yeah. if I if I had a, like a solid collection, if someone gifted me like the top gargs, like a pair of splotches, a pair of blotches, and a pair of uh, uh, super stripes. Stripes. Uh, dude, I would be like, I could, I could see myself getting into them. Um, yeah, I, well, I do. Maybe think we could work really, out a trade. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. you in the gargs and you yeah, get yeah. into crescents. There yeah, you go. Yeah, I'll support you, man. I'll, once you start popping them, you know, I'll pick some up. So, um, sounds but good. Yeah, the downside is that they take both the chewies and the gargs just take so long to grow. <laughs> A little bit. Uh, you know, I find what it's interesting is the gargs. I have some gargs that, like, dude, they grow to 60 yeah. grams yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. that. And then other ones, it's like, come on, man. Come these, on, eat your bugs. These Come on, me, eat your bugs. This took me over two years. It was like two and a half years yeah. to grow to a breedable size. So I was like, oh, this is taking so long. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's not instant gratification. Chewy that's for too. Sure. Chewies take quite a while to grow out uh, to be breedable. So yeah. <clears throat> so they're they're nice, but yeah, it does take a little – I'm a little bit impatient. So Cresties, Cresties are kind of the happy, happy spot for me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I appreciate that. All right. And and the uh, question that's going to get me canceled. Yes. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, so one other project that I think would be cool, I don't know enough about it, and I think it would probably piss off a ton of people, and that's not the reason why I would do it. I just think they're kind of cool. Hybrids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. The hybrids, I think, are kind of the best of both worlds with not being yeah. super flighty, but also just cool looking. A lot of them look, you know, kind of yeah. wild tiger. Yeah. Um, I know you have a hybrid as a pet, right? I'm seeing if I'm going to pull it for you. Um, oh, man. you want me to show it? Show you? Yeah, sure. Okay. Why? Go ahead. Let me show you. It's just right here. Is yours a male or a female? I have two males. Okay. See, that's what I hear. A lot of them are males. Yeah. Um, geez. Okay. Do you get yours from Tony's? No. Uh, Tony, I got mine from, um, Tracy. Oh, nice. Uh, it's not fired Beautiful. right now, but when this fires, dude, it's, re it's really contrasty. So, yeah. let's see. Oh, it's gorgeous. And they're such a cool size, too. Oh, jeez. It's going to bite my face off. Uh, <laughs> see, it's really a pixel. That is uh, the ones that she makes, Phantom Dragon Tracy, are really pixel mm -hmm. and orange. The camera's okay. not picking up on it. but um, Yeah, I mean. When it fires up, there's the... like, some really cool stripes on it. So... You know, I've seen David do his series on breeding them back to crested geckos, and it's really yeah. hard to tell. Yeah. My thought is, has anybody just bred F1, you know, hybrids together? To a, and what do those come out as? Um, I don't know if anyone has bred hybrids to hybrids successfully. I do know right. that somebody overseas in, is it Hong Kong? They bred a um, a fifty fifty hybrid to a lily white and made a seventy five twenty five hybrid, and they still actually look okay. pretty cool as, um, you know, uh, hybrid more more chewy than than a crested, but than anything, yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I see the danger of that getting that back into the population and muddying the waters, yeah. But yeah, um, for sure. I, you know, if it's clearly just like straight up fifty fifty, and you can breed, you know that to another hybrid yeah i think that would be a fun very micro small project yeah. um yeah most of so them are. i gotta find most a female seem, most of them seem male so that makes it tough mm -hmm. um but yeah i haven't i don't know if there's anyone who has bred um hybrid successfully together 50 50s but i i cool. agree that you got to keep them they have to look like hybrids man otherwise it just yep <laughs> it just muddies it um because i know tiki's right. he has he has some hybrids that look just like crested, man. And I think that's kind of yep. scary. Uh, it, like, it is. Oof. And again, once you go down that route with the wrong person who's trying to make a buck, um, yep. I, I get the, the ethical <laughs> dilemma. But 
guys, I'm a very ethical person. So I'm just trying to do something cool that <laughs> is very, you know, forthcoming. God, yeah. that's gorgeous. Yeah. 50, 50 hybrids, man. It's the way to go. These things are beautiful. Cause you, they're obviously like they have the build of Chewies, but they have yep. kind of that, um, a bit of the demeanor of, of both, you know, they're a little bit more chill. Yep. Um, yeah, they're really pretty. Yeah. So. I mean, handleability out of out of your collection, where do those rank? I know um, this is a small sample size. I would say – so I have two. I have two males. Um, I would say sure. they're, they're not uh, – I would say they're like a an active Cresty. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah so, so they an can chill. An active Cresty. That, that's not – Not, not, a, that's not, not a super flighty. Violent. Not a super flighty Cresty, but one that's sure. a little bit more – you know they can move around for sure like they'll climb around okay yeah they're, they're not just gonna sit there uh yeah yeah That's they like to move gorgeous around. at least mine do nice <laughs> yeah and you're uh, so so that's your one male is your other male a different color or uh it's i think they're they're likely siblings because they look very similar very similar yeah oh that's awesome yeah, yeah that's one thing i've noticed is the more people you meet um when people don't have money uh, I did a little video on how to get a gecko without any money. Uh, people are not everybody is open to a trade, but you'd be surprised how many people are open to trades for the right. Uh, you know, if you've got an extra thing you can throw in there to sweeten the deal or yeah. something. Yeah, I think so too. So yeah, that's that's kind of cool. Yeah, um, starting yeah starting projects without a money that, uh, without money or much money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good project. You know what I was so. thinking? Someone might steal this from me, but I was like, oh, we should do mm -hmm. a challenge where. Uh, all right, everyone start with a thousand bucks. I know that's a lot, but start with a thousand yeah. bucks and then let's track progress for the next two years and see how, what we have at, by then, like the projects we can build. Yeah. Uh, that'd be kind of fun. That would be <laughs> awesome. How about this? Well, okay. If any, well, we'll talk after this. If either <laughs> of our kids are around the same age, that would be cool to do like collab on that, do a video and have our kids buy the geckos and see how far they can get. <laughs> See, see what the kids <laughs> with our do? guidance <laughs> see what the kids do oh man we'll do a kids channel <laughs> that'd be fun, man. That'd be so fun. <laughs> no i think that's a great idea but a thousand bucks doesn't go very far with doesn't. depends on if you're going high end yeah, you know the, the goal is so. to get the best collection highest end and to turn your thousand bucks into you know some a, a really good project but which is going to be hard to do <laughs> dude I, I i if whenever i tell my story i don't think i've told it officially um I literally started with an extra tank from a bearded dragon, right? That I no yeah. longer had. Yeah. It was in my basement just sitting there. And I said, you know what? I want to, I want to get an animal, but I, I don't have any cash. So I literally messaged someone like, Hey, do you have uh, a gargoyle gecko that you would trade for uh, a tank? Wow. And they're like, yeah. <clears throat> oh, and so that's what I did. I got my first gargoyle gecko for a trade for a, an exoterra. Dude, that's the best man. I love that. That's like uh, so, that's like the beginnings of a true hustle, and I love yeah, I love that man. You don't start with like, a fl you know, like I had no cash, huge, <laughs> you know, right? Like you, you got to hustle, hustle for what you get. Yeah, yeah, and I love that man. Sold all my weights. Probably that was a mistake, you know, but <laughs> it's okay. You have kids, man. Got you're my not dad bod. You're not gonna use them anyway, bro. Let's be honest. <laughs> when oh. I when I had like, kids that young, dude, it was so hard to do anything physical. It's hard, so hard to exercise. So. I know. Yeah. I need to like you know integrate all the time I spend with the geckos. Like have some dumbbells like right next to it. Like all right, <laughs> here's a spray. Here's a lift. Here's a yeah, spray. Yeah, here's yeah. a lift. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's funny, dude. So, oh man. All right. Well, I, you know, I, speaking of kids, I got to go take yep. care of them. Yep, but Harry, them. this has been an absolute joy. I I am you know that's so fun, happy man. that you said yes and. Uh, I'm a fanboy. All right. Yeah, no, I'll admit it. I'm a fanboy of the gecko pod Thank you. and I uh, love what you guys do. And uh, I wish you all the best. So if you ever need anything, you know where to reach out. Awesome. Appreciate you, Bobby. Thank you for having me on, man. It's an honor and privilege. Yeah. And yeah. I wish nothing but uh, the best for you and everything you're doing. So keep on, keep on keeping on. Will do. Thank you so <laughs> much. And uh, guys, you know where to find uh, Harry, find him at zeros geckos, find him on the gecko pod, go watch his, uh, his vlog it's uh you're gonna learn not only about geckos but great Community. great advice too yeah thank you, thank you. appreciate that man all right man you have a great night all right bobby take care man all right see Bye. ya hey if you've enjoyed this video and want to encourage me to make more gargoyle gecko content do me a favor 
hit that subscribe button, share this with a friend, and maybe uh, check out one of the videos right over there. I'll see you next time on Gecko Cove.